Okay, so today we're going to be talking about a corner detection model that can be run on your FPGA using Vision HDL Toolbox. And suppose, for example, you want to look at houses that have been flooded, or maybe your application is surveillance of barges on a river, or perhaps you're looking at items moving through a factory processing line just to make sure that your plant is operating correctly. All of these things can be accomplished uh, using corner detection to find the objects of interest in your video. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this model that we have here that starts with an image source and from that image source we can select whether we want to look at the flooded houses, the river barges, or the packaging line. And once we've decided that, we can uh, view the input image across the top path in the model. And also, more importantly for our FPGA work, convert that input image, which is represented as a uh, large matrix with RGB pixels, into um, something that happens over time with a pixel control bus, exactly the same way it would happen for coming from a real hardware camera going into your FPGA. Then looking at our corner detection algorithm, we have a bunch of parameters we'd like to set. We'd like to set the slicing level, because corner detection works on black and white images, not grayscale or RGB. Um, eventually, we're going to want to overlay an output color on top of the corners. And so here we can select which colors we would like in, in RGB triple space. And then finally, we could select the transparency, how, how transparent or opaque we want the overlay to be. So diving into the corner detection algorithm itself, you can see it consists of a number of parts. And we'll start over here at the input side where the RGB pixels come in and are first converted to grayscale. And once they're converted to grayscale, the slicing level is applied to them to convert the gray further into binary for the corner detection problem. The binary image then is used to compute the gradients in both the x and y direction using edge detecting filters. The gradients are then squared and the cross product is formed to create a 2 by 2 covariance matrix. We don't actually form the matrix here, but you can see how it's being put together. The covariance parts then go into Gaussian filters, and the Gaussian filters, um, we're using the F special command out of the image processing toolbox to create the Gaussian filter matrix or kernel that we're talking about here. Here you can see it's a 5x5 five five with a 1.5 pixel radius. You can also select things in the image filter like the padding method you like to use. You can choose constant or replicate or symmetric like a mirror. If you choose constant, you can choose the actual value that you want to use. And then you can choose the line buffer size. And this is the amount of storage we need to hold the active pixels for the lines that we're storing. This is a 5x5 five five kernel. Therefore, we need to hold four lines of video in order to run the algorithm. Each of those lines could be as large as 2048. Or they could be as small as you like. One of the advantages of Vision HDL Toolbox is that you only need to set the maximum size that you'll ever handle here. You can always run with smaller sizes. And 2048 is a good size to choose for FPGAs today because that corresponds to the block RAM size. After we um, compute the Gaussians, then we the next step in our algorithm is to form the uh, determinant minus the trace, and, and that's simple arithmetic. Um, after the arithmetic, we then do a level comparison as part of the corner detection algorithm, and the final result here at the output of the convert levels block is a representation of the corners of the original input image in streaming video with its own pixel control bus. Now we would like to overlay that on top of the original RGB image, which is coming in to this top port uh, along with its timing. But all of the processing that we've done previously has 
delayed the corner pixels by more than a thousand clock cycles relative to the original incoming image. So we need the align video block to put those two back in the same time alignment using a FIFO to delay the RGB side so that it matches the timing of the corners. And once we have those two things put together in time, we can do the overlay. And as I said earlier, we have an RGB value that we're using as the overlay value, you can control, plus a transparency value. And we're, what we're doing is very similar to what's done on a green screen in television production, where the corners are added on top of the incoming RGB image with transparency, so that you can control how much you can see through them or how opaque or transparent they are. Okay, so popping back up to the top level now, let's run this model. And when we run it, you'll see there are two video viewers, the input and the output. And the output consists of the original image plus the detected corners here shown in red because we've picked 255.00 as our color. We can adjust that or we can adjust the transparency so that we see more or less of the background. While the model's running, I can also change the input to be something like the river barges for more of a surveillance pro problem. And the next time we get to a frame boundary, we'll switch to the river barges. And you can see the corners are detected there as well. And then finally, suppose our problem is in fact the packaging line. Again, when we get to the next frame boundary, we'll switch in just a second to the packages on a factory line. And you can see here that they are also clearly uh, detected quite easily. And this might be the first step in your uh, image processing problem, but clearly you have a good base to work on and build out from here.